Hey guys, uh, welcome to our next probability lesson. And today we want to talk about the general multiplication rule and tree diagrams. So we already know we have a general addition rule, right? So or means add. So the probability of A or B is going to be the probability of A plus the prob probability of B minus the probability of A and B, right? So that's the general addition rule. Today we're going to see a general multiplication rule. So or means add in probability. The word and means multiply. So keep that in the back of your minds as we go after this general multiplication rule. But first, let's begin with something we know already, and that's the conditional probability formula. So if I have the probability of B given A, we know we can find it by formula because the numerator is going to be the anding or the intersection of the two. So that's the probability of A and B. And if it's a probability of B given A that we want, we're going to divide by the probability of A. So here's something we know already. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this to easily derive what we call the general multiplication rule. So all we're going to do is kind of like multiply both sides of this equation by probability of A. Or you can think about it, think about it as if you're cross multiplying, like this is over 1 and you're just kind of cross multiplying. Either way, you should clearly be able to see that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. And this is what we call the general rule for multiplication. So here we are with the general rule for multiplication. And general rules, of course, are great because they always work, right? The general rule for addition always works. This general rule, general rule for multiplication also always works. So and means multiply. These are the two things we multiply if I want the probability of A and B. So it's going to be the probability of A times the probability of B given A. So we're going to use this formula today, and we're also going to do some problems that involve tree diagrams. And the first example is coming your way next. Okay, so here we are with this problem. So let me read through it. It says, for men, binge drinking is defined as having five or more drinks in a row, and for women, as having four or more drinks in a row. 44% of college students engage in binge drinking. 37% drink moderately, and 19% abstain entirely. Among binge drinkers, 17% have been involved in an alcohol-related car accident in which they were driving while intoxicated. Among moderate drinkers, 9% have been involved in an alcohol-related car accident in which they were driving while intoxicated. So if we choose a college student at random, we'll define the following events. So we're going to call event A, the student is a binge drinker, B, the student is a moderate drinker, C, the student does not drink, and D, the student has been involved in an alcohol-related car accident in which he or she was the intoxicated driver. So our first task here is to use probability notation, using probability notation, symbolically indicate the underlying probabilities above. So you see those percentages in the words up there. We want to write each of those using the symbols of probability. So let's see if we can do this. Okay, so we just read through the problem. What we want to do is write symbolically what these underlined probabilities are. So the first one there is 44% of college students engage in binge drinking, right? So 44%. So event A is the student is a binge drinker, right? Binge drinker. So the probability of A is simply going to be 0.44. So that's pretty straightforward, right? The next one, also straightforward, it says 37% drink moderately. B is the event that the student is a moderate drinker. So the probability of event B, the probability that the student is a moderate drinker, is 0.37. And 19% uh, abstain entirely. So C is a student that doesn't drink. So they abstain entirely from drinking. So the probability of event C is going to be 0.17. Okay, that was easy enough. Uh, sorry. 0.19 actually, not 0.17. So 19% abstain. 
All right. It goes on to say that among binge drinkers, 17% have been involved in an alcohol-related car accident. So D is the event that you've been involved in an alcohol-related car accident. But this says among binge drinkers, right? So 17% is not going to be the probability of D. Since it says among binge drinkers, right, we know that the student chosen is a binge drinker. So among those, 17% of those have been involved in an alcohol-related car accident. That sounds like a conditional probability, which of course it is. So the probability of D, which is been involved in a car accident in which you were the intoxicated driver, given that uh, you were a binge drinker. So that's what we call event A. So that's going to be the probability of D given A. So the probability of D given A, that's what 0.17 is. And then it says 9% uh, have been involved in an alcohol-related car accident if they were a moderate drinker. So we know they're a moderate drinker, so that's the given. And the probability they've been involved in an accident, that's D. So the probability of D given that they're a moderate drinker, that's 0.09. So let's see if we can get the probability of D given C. So what would that be? Well, the probability of D given C in this case, right? C is the event that the student does not drink. So what's the probability if we know the student doesn't drink? What's the probability they've been involved in an alcohol related car accident in which they were the intoxicated driver? You guessed it. Zero, right? This is why drinking is not good for you, right? One of the many reasons actually, right? So the probability of D given C is gonna be zero. So the first question we wanna answer in this problem is, what's the probability that a student is a binge drinker who had an alcohol-related car accident? So what's the probability that the student is a binge drinker? So that's A, right? And it says, who had an alcohol-related car accident? So in other words, they're a binge drinker and they've been involved in an alcohol-related car accident. That's event D. So this is what we're finding. And of course, we have this handy-dandy rule, the general rule for multiplication. So now's our chance to use it. So the probability of A and D is gonna be simply the probability of A times the probability of D given A. So in this case, the probability of A, of course, just 0 0.4, 0 0.44 that is, uh, times the probability of D given A, which is 0.17. And if you multiply these together, I think you get something like 0 0.0748, right? So um, there's a 7.5% chance that uh, when you choose a random college a random college student this this student will be binge drinker who has been involved in an alcohol related car accident. Technically, alcohol-related car accident in which they were the intoxicated driver. But we get the idea here, right? And I'm running out of room anyway. So there's a 7.5% chance that if you choose a random college student, that random college student you've chosen will be a binge drinker who has been involved in an alcohol-related car accident. So that's one way that we can use this rule, the general multiplication rule. So let's move on to question two. So question two says this. So question two, and this is where we're going to need a tree diagram. It says, what's the probability that the student has been involved in an alcohol-related car accident? So we know symbolically what we're finding, right? It's just simply this. But it's not that simple to answer the question 
But what will help us answer the question is if we can build this thing called a tree diagram. So let's do it. So if you're a college student, we're classifying you either as a binge drinker, right? So we're gonna say that's event A. We're gonna say you're a moderate drinker, that's event B. Or you don't drink at all, that's event C. So you're classified as one of these. And if you are a binge drinker, that means, well, you've either been involved in an alcohol-related car accident, that's what we're calling D, or you haven't, so that would be D complement. Same here, if you're a moderate drinker, you've either been involved in one, or you haven't. And I guess we'll do the same thing for C. So this is what we call a tree diagram. And we can place probabilities upon this diagram. So we were told that 44% of college students are binge drinkers, so that's 0.44. We were told that, uh, what is it, 37% of college students are moderate drinkers. And 19% that's event C, don't drink. Okay, so if you go along the tree diagram here, we know that we're dealing with a binge drinker. So if you're a binge drinker, what's the probability you've been involved in an alcohol-related car accident? Well, that's this right here, right? Probably a D given A. So we know A happened, now what's the probability of D? Well, that's 0.17. And of course, if that's 0.17, D complement, must be 0.83 if we know the student is a binge drinker. If the student is a moderate drinker, then the probability that they were involved in a car accident in which they were the intoxicated driver is 9%, and the probability that they haven't been involved in such an accident is 91%. What's this probability, though? The probability that we know we've chosen a student who doesn't drink What's the probability they've been involved in a car accident in which they were the intoxicated driver? And of course that is zero. And if that's zero, the probability that they haven't been involved in an alcohol related car accident in which they were the intoxicated driver, that's one. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the following probabilities. So the probability of A and D. Now, if you've seen tree diagrams before, and you probably have, you probably remember that we multiply as we move along the branches. But I think we know why now, because it's gonna be the probability of A times, now when we write this, it's not really the probability of D. It's the probability of D given that A happened, right? That's what this is. This is the probability of D given that B happened. This is the probability of D given that C happened, right? And I think we found this probability as part of our question one. We did, that was 0.0748. So this probability here is going to be 0 0.0748, so that's 0.0748. And yes, we can see here that if I want the probability of A and D complement, that's gonna be the probability of A times the probability of D complement given A. In other words, the multiplication of these two, 0.44 times 0.83. And if we do that multiplication, I think we get uh, 0.3652, something like that. Now, I'm not going to write the rest of these symbolically because I think you can grasp the idea at this point that we're just multiplying along the branches. So the probability of B and D will be just the multiplication of 0.37 times 0.09. So I'll write the numbers this time. So 0.37 times 0.09. And that turns out to be 0.033, I think. Can't read the number. 0.033. Yeah, I can't read that. Sorry, I gotta actually do that one. So 0.37 times 0.09. And that's 0.0333. So it's three threes, okay. So 0.0333. The probability of B and D complement is gonna be the multiplication of 0.37 and 0.91. And those multiply to 0.3367. The probability of C and D is gonna be 0.19 times zero. 0.19 times zero, that's zero of course. So the probability we choose a student that doesn't drink and that student's been involved in an accident like this, zero. And the probability 
of C and D complement is going to be 0.19 times 1. So, of course, that is 0.19. And these are all the possibilities. If you were to add all of these up, you should get 1. So that's about 7.5%. That's 36.5%. So that adds actually up to uh, what? So 7.5 and 36.5, it's like 44%, right? Which actually is this number. If you add these two together, I think you're going to get 37%. And of course, this and this is 19%. But if you add up all of these, you should get one. Just like if you add up all of these, you would get one. Just like this plus this is one, that plus that is one, and that plus that is one. But what does all this have to do with trying to find this? So we're trying to find the probability that a randomly chosen college student has been involved in an alcohol related car accident. So, there's three different ways to get there, right? It's either this way, this way, or this way. And since it's this, or this, or this, or means add. Now, when can we simply add them together? When events are mutually exclusive. And these events are mutually exclusive because you can't be both a binge drinker and a moderate drinker at the same time. You can't be a non-drinker and a binge drinker at the same time and so on. So we know the probability of D is going to be the probability of A and D plus the probability of B and D plus the probability of C and D. And in this case, probability of A and D, that was 0 0.0748. The probability of B and D was 0 0.0333. And of course, C and D was just zero. So the probability, if we choose a student at random, that they've been involved in an alcohol-related car accident is going to turn out to be 0.1081. So there's about an 11% chance that when you choose a random college student, they've been involved in an alcohol-related car accident of this type. Okay, so the answer for question three was 11%, right? So an 11% chance that uh, a student, a college student has been involved in an alcohol-related car accident in which they were the intoxicated driver. Now question four says, if we know a student has been involved in an alcohol-related accident where they were the intoxicated driver, now tell me what the probability is that the student is a binge drinker. So let's write symbolically what question four is asking for. So again, what do we know? We know the student has been involved in an alcohol-related car accident, right? So it's the probability of something given D because that's what we know here. Right? We know they've been involved in an alcohol-related car accident, and we want to find the probability the student is a binge drinker. So that's what we call event A. So we're trying to find this, the probability of A given D. So here's what we know. We know the formula for conditional probability is simply going to be the probability of A and D divided by the probability of D. Now the probability of D, of course, that was the answer we got from question three. So let's write this off to the side. That was the probability of D was 0 0.1081. And the probability of A and D, that was the answer to question number two, right? Question number two was what's the probability a student is a binge drinker who had an alcohol-related car accident? So binge drinker and they were involved in an alcohol-related car accident. And that answer for number two, if I recall, and actually I don't recall, so I got to look it up real quick. Uh, that was, I think, yeah, there it is, uh, 0.0748. So once you have these two numbers, finding this probability is pretty straightforward, right? So the probability of A given D is going to be equal to the probability of A and D, so that's our 0.0748 number divided by 0 0.1081. And when we do this division with a calculator, which I can't find right now, oh, there it is. So we're gonna get what? So we have 0 0.0748, and I can't read anything on the screen here. So divided by, uh, yeah, 0 0.1081, sorry. So we get uh, 0.6920, something like that. So the probability of A given D is equal to 0.6920. Now, that's the answer to this question. 
which is nice. It's always nice to get the number correct. Uh, but we're, of course, going to interpret that number. But before we do, this, of course, looks very easy. It's just plugging into a formula. But these questions tend to be amongst the hardest that we see. And that's because usually what they do is they don't set you up to get to this answer. What they usually do is they just give you all the information and say, okay, if you know the student has been involved in an alcohol-related car accident, now tell me what the probability is that they're a binge drinker. So you haven't done any of the other steps. You haven't created the, the tree diagram. You haven't found any of those probabilities. They just ask you this. So it's hard to put that all together. So here's the answer, 0. 0.6920. Let's do the interpretation of this answer. So if a random college student is chosen, so if a random college student is chosen, And we know, of course, what we know is they've been involved in an alcohol-related car accident, or he or she has been involved in an alcohol-related car accident. Uh, there's a 69% chance, that's a pretty high percent chance, 69% chance that this student is a binge drinker. So that's an important probability to know. So if you're talking to someone or you hear about someone that's been involved, a college student who's been involved in an alcohol-related car accident in which they were the intoxicated driver, there's a really good chance, 69% chance, that that student is a binge drinker. Okay, let's do a similar problem to this, but this one is going to involve pregnancy. So let's get into that one next. Okay, let's read this question together. It says, it is known that 70% of all women that take a home pregnancy test are actually pregnant. So a home pregnancy test is 90% accurate when a woman is actually pregnant. However, when a woman is not pregnant, she will test positive 40% of the time. So if a woman tests positive, what is the probability that she is pregnant? Okay, so let's dive right in. Okay, so we have this problem with the pregnancy test and we're gonna do it with the tree diagram. And first of all, let's figure out what it is we're trying to find. Uh, at the end it says, if a woman tests positive, what's the probability she's pregnant? So what do we know? We know she tests positive. So it sounds like a conditional probability because we know something. So we know she tests positive, what's the probability she's pregnant? So the conditional probability we're trying to find then is the probability that she's pregnant given that the test is positive. So let's begin by building the tree diagram. So here's what we know. The woman taking this pregnancy test is either pregnant or she isn't. I believe that's how it works. So she's either pregnant or she's not pregnant, the complement of being pregnant. If she is pregnant, the test will either produce a positive result or a negative result. If she's not pregnant, the test will either produce a positive result or a negative result. Okay. The very first line of the problem says that 70% of all women that do take the test are actually pregnant. So for these uh, women that take the test, 70% of them are actually pregnant, 30% of them are not. If this uh, woman is actually pregnant, the test is 90% accurate. So if she's actually pregnant, it's gonna give a positive result 90% of the time. So it's 90% accurate. However, in some cases, the woman will be pregnant and it'll get a negative result on the test. That'll happen 10% of the time. Okay. It says in the second sentence, a home pregnancy, a home pregnancy test is 90% accurate when a woman is actually pregnant. Okay, we got that. Third sentence. However, when a woman is not pregnant, she will test positive 40% of the time. So you're going to get a 40% positive test rate even if the woman is not pregnant. So it's going to be 60% negative. Okay, that's the tree diagram. That's what we want to know. So if we use our conditional probability formula, the probability of pregnant given positive, 
it's going to be the probability of pregnant and positive divided by the probability of positive. So those are the two probabilities we need right there. So I think we're good with pregnant and positive, right? That's this branch right here. So the probability of pregnant and positive is simply going to be the multiplication of these two. So 0.7 times 0.9. So that's going to be 0.63. So we got ourselves the numerator, the probability of pregnant and positive. But how do we get the probability of positive? Well, that's similar to what we saw in the other tree diagram. Because there's two ways to get to positive. One way is to get there this way. The other way is to get there this way, right? So you're either going to be pregnant and positive or not pregnant and positive. So let's find the probability that a, that a woman is not pregnant and they end up with a positive test. This is going to be the multiplication of these two. So 0.3 times 0.4. So this is going to be 0.12. So the probability that a woman tastes, tests positive is going to be either this or this, right? That's the only two ways to get that positive test result. So it's either going to be that one or that one. So since it's this or this, and they are mutually exclusive, you can't be both pregnant and not pregnant at the same time, the probability of positive is going to be the probability of pregnant and positive plus the probability of not pregnant and positive. So the probability of pregnant and positive was 0.63. The probability of not pregnant and positive is 0.12. So this is going to be a 75% chance that the test is positive. So the probability of positive is going to be 0.75. We need that to get the probability we want. So I think we have both pieces now. So the probability of pregnant given you have a positive test result. And before we find it, let's face it, this is an important probability to know. So if you're the woman taking the test and you get a positive result, you're really going to want to know if you're actually pregnant or not, right? And that's what we're finding here. So the probability of pregnant given positive is this, the probability of pregnant and positive, which is 0.63, divided by the probability of getting a positive result, which is 0.75. So the probability of pregnant given positive is the division of 0.63 and 0.75. So let's do it. 0.63 divided by 0.75, and it is 0.84. And of course, that number has a pretty significant meaning to the woman taking the pregnancy test. So the woman takes the test, she gets a positive result. It doesn't definitely mean she's pregnant, it means there's an 84% chance that she's actually pregnant.